It's time for that annual refresh. Time for some low tops. Hey, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got a detailed look and breakdown on these bad boys right here. This is the Air Jordan 38 Low. It's their annual refresh of the main flagship shoe. Usually this hits a little bit more closer to the summer season. So I think it's kind of interesting that they've hit uh, right in the middle of winter. Not that I'm complaining. I usually prefer lows. So this is a good move in my opinion for the most part. And uh, not much has changed. Only one important thing. We'll get to that in a second. But first off, the outsole, just like the original, We've got herringbone from top to bottom. This was a issue and a non-issue on a basketball court. So the non-issue is actually the overall performance. This is just a great ass outsole. If you were to grab these from overseas, I don't know about these specifically, but I know the high top version, more specifically this one. Uh, if you were to grab these from overseas, they actually do not come with translucent rubber. They come with solid rubber. So if you didn't want a clear outsole for whatever reason, just to try and avoid any potential issues, I would go and grab an EP version or what were they called? PF? Usually you can get those from either the eBay seller ID for shoes. You can also just like search it on eBay, like Jordan 38 PF, or you can go on to a place like Goat and they'll literally have like two models listed like of the same shoe. And you'd be like, why is one one way and the other is the other? That's why one is different because it's an Asia model. And then one is the regular one for everyone else. But the only issue that these guys actually encountered during testing was some of the rubber would split, uh, like the glue would come undone and stuff like that. Usually in this little spot right here, because that's where a lot of friction is happening start to stop. So it's almost like peeling it back. Did they fix that with the low tops? I'm not sure, I really hope so. I don't know if stronger glue would fix that or if it's just an overall design flaw that is like, something that cannot be fixed you know what i'm saying but either way i did find it very weird that the shoe overall passed wear testing assuming that they did it without anybody having that problem and then the first time that we took them out problem y'all got one job like for real make shoes did i stutter But anyways, if you enjoyed the performance of the Air Jordan 38s and you wanted something with a little bit more ankle mobility or less ankle restriction without sacrificing too much of everything else that you like, then this could be a good option for you. And actually, MJ did that. If you go and look at either footage or images, stuff like that, he would usually start games in the mids and then all of a sudden he'd be in the lows and they'd usually look just like the mids. You would never be able to know. So fun fact, uh, he liked playing in lows too. A lot of people like to bring up when he rolled his ankle in the 11 low, he still wore lows after that, all the way through his wizard's days. Now the cushion on these guys is very interesting, probably their best feature. Again, nothing's changed between these and the highs outside of the overall product description online. So when the shoe was originally unveiled, it said that there was a three tier cushion setup, not word for word, but there is one. Basically you had the Phylon midsole, which is all the white portions that you see. And then underneath that, all this red, they labeled or listed as Cushlon 3.0. But when I go over to nikes.com and the Nike app and all that stuff, I read the product Product description of the women's colorway, the all orange joints that look like the D Rose uh, 2.5s, the all star joints. They actually list it as Formula 23. So, what is it? It's the same, shit, guys. It's the same shit. marketing, man marketing. They're just trying to get you to buy their stuff. That's all. I also found it really weird that in almost every other colorway, the product description is different. It's not like a copy and paste. They literally took out the Formula 23 and the Cushlon 3.0 part. All you can find is the top loaded full length zoom strobe, which is awesome. So that's my favorite feature of the shoe. It feels so good on foot. Like you get cushion everywhere from direct impact all the way through until it reaches the bottom of your foot. The only thing in between is this shitty ass insole, but we can all move past it because the rest of the cushion is just amazing. They still have the X plate system here. So you can see in the forefoot and the midfoot uh, on both the medial and lateral side, it wraps all the way underneath the shoe. This is the ode to the Air Jordan 8. And uh, apparently it's for the pivot point or not the pivot point, but like his post move, the post fade, which I had assumed when I first reviewed the shoe, but I didn't know for sure. I just, that's my only like thought, like watching the guy play almost my entire life, young life not adult life, he's been retired. If you ever watch his footwork, especially in the low post, that was just his thing. He always like rocked right on the forefoot of his shoe. So that was the only thing to me that made sense. And again, it's still there. So you get a ton of torsion support and all that kind of good stuff, but you don't feel like restrictive, which is important. Unlike stuff like the Air Jordan 11 or the Air Jordan 12, where you gotta break them in a little bit. Now the upper on these guys, uh, just like the high top version, they're made with at least 20% recycled material. Some people actually are really mad, like collectors, that this is the Jordan box. 
box. You know what I mean? Like that's usually besides the annual flagship, the one thing that you can count on is one hell of a box that they'll be packaged in, whether it's a briefcase or a drawer slide or some weird ass contraption. Like, I don't know if you guys remember the box for the Jordan 20s. That was pretty cool. The Jordan 21 and 22s also had a great box. Those things had little slots where you can stick in the interchangeable cushion pods. It was fucking cool. But this year we got that piece of shit. But anyways, in addition to the shoe itself being made of at least 20% recycled material, the entire thing is made up of 100% synthetic material. So there's no raw materials on here. There's nothing premium about it. You would think that I would have a big problem with that because I'm the premium materials guy. Like, hey, bring things back to the way that things used to be in the 80s and 90s. But I've always said, as long as you can make it feel like it feels like it's like leather and stuff like that or Nubuck, then I'm okay with that. And that's how I feel with these. The Nubuck is clearly cheap. Like you could feel it. It just feels like but it still looks cool. So there's that. Now, something that they changed is actually the overall lacing system. That I think is not an upgrade. I think that that's actually a downgrade. But when I put these on and I start flexing them, this point right here really moves and bows away from the foot. It's kind of weird. It doesn't feel one-to-one -one whatsoever. So I don't like that. I really did prefer, I don't even know what to call that, but just that lacing system. I think that that's better. The tongue is the same though. So you get tons of ventilation, breathability. It's also neoprene, something that I did not, and I'm still mad about this, but I did not catch this originally when I reviewed these but I was like oh the tongue's kind of cool looking don't know what it's for I just kind of been like oh maybe it's for him sticking his tongue out which is stupid even though they've done that before with the Air Jordan 15 but somebody had sent me I can't even remember who it was I think it was random objects and he was just like nah bro it's the leg sleeve I was like it is. I do wish that they would have kept that theme here, like kept it black on the inside and red at the top line, because that's what he would wear every game. Like he would wear that black leg sleeve and then roll down the top of it so that it had that little red punch poking through. The interior is different than the original high tops. They have actually quilted or fake quilted. They just add stitching. Uh, I think that that's a feature that needs to go away for a little while. I don't think that it's important. I don't think that it adds anything to it. But definitely no performance enhancement and it's not more comfortable than the other one. So why bother? Outside of that, the height difference between the two is actually not too different. So you should still get the same overall performance given that you actually get your size right. And that's the main drawback to the shoe, in my opinion, is that these I bought in the same exact size as those. I'm usually a nine in almost everything. And these fit hella long, dude. Like I was like, bro, what the f I don't know what changed between these two, but it, this I don't recommend doing because it's not accurate whatsoever, typically, but you can do it and have it actually be accurate if you actually match up the same outsoles or tooling, so midsole and outsole. A lot of people do this with like a Yeezy and then something else, and it's just like, dude, they're totally different shapes. It's not the same. But when you match these things up, why is this so much longer than the original one, man? Like I love the fit of the mid top and this one just doesn't fit right. Like I gotta go return them and go get a different size. It kind of sucks. Gotta love online shopping. I could not find these in store either. I checked Foot Locker's location services, nowhere. I checked Dick's Sporting Goods location services, nowhere. And now I bought them from Nike.com direct and now you dumbasses get a return on your hands. Good job. So overall, I would recommend that most people go down half a size unless you've got an extremely wide foot or you wear an ankle brace and it bulks up the back and pushes your foot a little bit forward. That's the only reason why I would see anybody being like, yeah, true to size is the way to go. But sound off below and let us know what you think about the Air Jordan 38 in the comment section. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. We will catch y'all on the next one. So until then, have a good one. I am really bummed that I got to bring these back or send them back. I really like these.